Cricket Life Stories with me Neil Kagram. Today we're joined by Will Linton. Will, you're going to show us some ground fielding tips for all. Take it away. So yeah, the most important thing that we need to think about is what is the aim, what's the objective of fielding the ball on the ground? Obviously it's handle the ball well so they can't get an extra run, but then it's to get the ball back onto the, the either the keeper's end or the bowler's end as efficiently and accurately as possible. And that all starts with our legs and the types of positions we get into. So the first thing we need to think about is even before the ball is hit, what are we doing? And one of my big bugbears in cricket is walking in. And I know culturally it's what we do in order to be in time with the bowler. But what we find is when we walk in, it slows us down that we're not necessarily in a particularly athletic position. I'm much more of a fan, especially if you're fielding in the circle, and think about how we almost incorporate like a little split step from tennis. So rather than me walking back and forth every time the bowler delivers, but just having a little bit of downtime and being ready, right? As the bowler approaches, now I'm gonna get ready, and then right as that ball enters the batting area, boom, now I'm in a, an athletic position. And I would argue that that's much easier for me to get into a place where I can now react left, right, forwards, backwards, jump in the air, whatever I need to, than if I'm walking in and hoping that I'll get there. Walking in might work for some, but I found that getting this little split step is a much better strategy for us to be in an athletic fielding position. So what we're gonna work on now is technique for fielding the ball and throwing it to the stumps when we're inside the circle. Now, hopefully, if we're all on the same page, if the ball was hit right at me, I could just field it and come into my regular fielding position. Or if I'm throwing already at my line, I can stay in this position. What I want to focus on is what happens if I need to throw to my non-throwing side. I'm a right-handed thrower, so if the ball is hit at me and I now need to change direction, how can I do that as quickly as possible? Because we're looking here to save fractions of seconds and it might take too long for me to come up, set my feet, turn all the way around and get lined up. So I need to think about how quickly can I get rid of the ball. So the first variation we're going to do is just dropping a knee. And when this ball comes in, all I'm going to do is drop my knee and then throw from here. And it's that simple. It's, I want to be clear, it's not a long barrier. I'm fielding this ball here and as it comes in, I drop the knee and then throw. Okay, so the next progression from throwing inside the circle is to move a little bit further back and stay on our feet the whole time. And we're going to introduce now a half pivot. So as opposed to dropping my knee and throwing, I'm gonna half turn, but the goal is I'm not gonna take all the time to spin all the way around. I'm just gonna get my feet set, chest onto the target, and get rid of it as quick as I can. It's gonna feel a little bit, almost like a sidearm sling, but again, it's about keeping my elbow and shoulder in line together, so I protect this line. So even though I'm here, this is still a strong throwing position as opposed to dropping my elbow down. As long as I can maintain this posture between my shoulders and my arm, we're gonna be good to go. So now the biggest benefit from dropping the knee or using that half pivot is speed. But sometimes we lack a little bit of power. So the further we get away from the stumps, the closer we get to the edge of the circle, we need to incorporate our feet a little bit more. And so this last one is called kind of the inside pivot where we're gonna pivot as quick as we can to get our feet and shoulders lined up. But again, the emphasis is still speed. I can't be taking many steps. I need to think about how quickly I can get the ball and then go one, two into the throwing position. Two steps or less in order to get rid of this ball. So when throwing from the boundary, the objective remains the same as from the inner circle. We need to get the ball as quickly as we can from the ground back to either the keeper or the bolter. The difference is we now need to throw the ball further. So how do we throw it further? Well, we use our legs. But how should we use our legs? How do we do that as efficiently as possible? There are three ways that we can do this. First one, if the ball tipped right at me and I need to hit throw it straight away, I'm gonna use what I would call a drive step. Maybe we used to think about it as a crow hop, but I prefer a drive step because I find with a crow hop, we jump a little bit too much in the air and I want our energy going towards the target. So my drive step would be, I'm gonna attack the ball, field off of that front foot, and then drive this back leg towards the target to get myself into that strong throwing position. The next one, would be if it was to my non-throwing side. So for me as a right-handed thrower, that's my left hand. If I was to attack this ball here and then implement a drive step, I'm gonna end up misaligned to the target. So I need to kind of use that inside pivot footwork again as quick as I can, shuffle my feet into a strong throwing position. 
This isn't going to be as strong as a drive step, but it's quick. And in some ways, quick is as good as anything, especially when it comes to cricket. And then the final one would be on a ball to my arm side. So if I'm running along the boundary, I'm close to the boundary, I now need to throw the ball back in. What I'm going to find is if I pick it off of my front leg, it might actually be better if my back leg is my front leg in this position. So as I'm coming in to attack the ball, I feel that here, as opposed to fielding it here. And what this now means is I can include a step behind. So I can pick it up off of my right leg, left leg, and step behind and get lined up. This will be the most powerful of the three, but I am taking an extra step. That shuffle here means that there's more time on the throw. So I really only want to implement that when I have to, which is fielding the ball from my right hand side. So now we're gonna work on just a little bit of progression on throwing on the run. That, the end goal is to make sure that we're comfortable throwing on the run. And it's such an important skill for cricket to be able to pick the ball up one-handed and get rid of it and ideally hit the stumps on a direct hit. But how often do we practice it? I mean, even myself as a throwing coach, I talk an awful lot about strong throwing positions, yet most of our runouts come from here. Not to say that this doesn't matter and this isn't important, but we do need to spend some time giving our players confidence and the skills critically in order to execute those running throws. So we're gonna start right at the beginning and then work all the way up to some hopefully pretty athletic, pretty great throws. So we're gonna start with just getting comfortable balancing on one leg. So I'm a right-handed thrower, so that means it's gonna be my right foot. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up my foot ever so slightly and I'm gonna balance on one leg and then from here, I'm gonna try and throw. And for me, this is really important that I balance. Two things are gonna happen. One, I'm obviously developing the skill of throwing on one leg, but I'm also developing that connection between my top and my bottom halves. I'm having to subconsciously brace my core in order to balance. I don't wanna just stand on one leg and throw. I wanna take my time. So I'm gonna get balanced, and then from here, throw. And if I can, I'm gonna try and keep that front leg off of the ground. And then once I've made a couple, now I'm gonna experiment a little bit and see if actually can I get a little bit low. As I drop my torso, my arm goes, but I also need this leg out to balance me. So I'm not dropping my arm here, my whole body is tilting to the side. So this would me be over the top. Now I'm gonna to come to the side. And now I might even go underneath submarine style. So again, we come here and we go Marshall making sure my back leg is plugged into the ground, making sure my arm action is good. Now from here, the next step of Marshall is to go walking throws. And the benefit for throwing on the run is we're now just increasing that intensity just a little bit. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to walk towards the cone I just threw off, but every time my back foot hits the ground, I'm gonna make a throw. So it's like the wrong foot throws. It is the wrong foot throws, but it's in the context of building up to throwing on the run. So I'm gonna start back here, walk in, and every time my back foot hits the ground, I'm gonna make a throw. Right, so, now we need to add in some running. And we're gonna go forwards, backwards, and forwards. You'd be surprised at how challenging it is to throw on the run while moving backwards and forwards. We often find that we run forwards and the first thing players want to do is set their feet and get back to this strong throwing position which is great, but that's not what we're working on. We're working on throwing off this back foot. So we're just trying to encourage them to keep their feet moving and throw on the run. And then do the same while they're going backwards. And what we find is when they throw backwards, the accuracy often goes completely out the window, but that's fine. The purpose of the drill is just to get comfortable being athletic and moving. So again, we run forwards and throw, and then run backwards and throw. Then for our final progression, we now need this cone set up in the middle. So we now have a target. And we're gonna go between our side cones here so it gets a little bit more game-like, a little bit more like we're trying to throw on the run, get those batsmen out between the stumps as they're trying to take an extra one, or dare I see it, even two off of them. So, we're going to start here on this side cone. And I'm going to run towards my other side cone. But every time I get to the middle cone, 
is going to be when I throw. The trick here is obviously this is my arm side. So I can just throw on the run and keep on moving. When I'm coming this way, I've got a choice. I can either open up and throw across my body here, but that's not a strong way to throw. Much better for me to actually spin, pirouette almost like a ballerina and throw. So there we go, throwing on the run. Starting from the most basic principle of standing on one leg, building all the way up to throwing across your body and even adding a little spin to finish.